welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian. I'm streaming to you from beautiful Victoria here in Western Canada. I hope that all of you had a great week and I hope you're looking forward to a fantastic weekend. Uh, welcome uh, Domenico. Hi Silviana, Anahita, Fuang, Angel, Elizabeth. Nice to see many of our members. Uh, everyone, this is a members chat class. To join the chat, you need to be a member of our YouTube channel. Uh, to do that, simply click the join button next to the subscribe button and select the tier that's right for you. Uh, however, of course, everybody is welcome to watch and uh, I highly recommend subscribing to the channel that's free. Uh, shortly, in about two hours, we will have a listening IELTS listening section class uh, where uh, it will be a subscribers chat class so all of our members and subscribers can join that chat. Uh, welcome Chen, our chat moderator. Welcome Carolina, our chat moderator. Good to have you on board with me today. Uh, students, this is an IELTS a reading class about friction between Canada and the USA. I think um, when uh, when people around the world think about uh, Canadians and Americans, they usually think about you know brothers and always getting along, but uh, that's not always the case. Friction means that there's a bit of conflict. There's a bit of uh, um, disagreement, let's say, between the two nations. Um, students, this is brought to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS. Visit us there. For the general IELTS, visit us at giltshelp.com. Those are the websites that power these website, these uh, live lessons. These websites house the materials for these live classes. Uh, this is our academic IELTS website here at aehelp.com. To join the premium uh, IELTS package here, click this big red button. It's a one-time payment for lifetime access. Absolutely worth it. Doesn't cost a lot of money. We're an IDP affiliate. We're a British Council partner. We're an IELTS test registration center. I'm a certified British Council agent. And when you click that big red button, you can use the discount code SPICE9 coming from our latest video to get a, an additional 10% discount. So definitely check that out. Uh, we will use the website today for uh, doing some of the uh, reading practice. Uh, for general IELTS students, it's gltshelp.com, green background. Again, click that big red button and join the premium version of our course. Uh, we help thousands and thousands of students every month uh, to succeed on their IELTS tests. So become one of those success stories. Uh, students, um, apps, yes, of course, uh, academic IELTS help, general IELTS help, link those to the websites. Uh, if you have questions, send me an email, adrian at aehelp.com or admin at aehelp.com. And um, again, we've got lots of classes, so today and tomorrow. Uh, check out the video uploads as well. Uh, they're great, um, really helpful for getting ready for your test. Uh, this is a speaking video right here, so check that one out. All right. Uh, Anahita, the transcripts uh, for the listening sections are at the end of the exam books, not the end of the workbooks, so check them out there. All right, everybody, um, let's uh, look into this reading. So reading strategies. Uh, first tip, everybody, for your IELTS reading. Uh, this is very important. Read the title. Uh, I think um, there are still many students out there who tend to skip the title thinking it will save them time. Uh, first of all, the title is only a few words, like three, four, five words. So it shouldn't take you more than a few seconds to read it and it's definitely a really bad idea to skip it. Um, the title gives a general understanding of what you're going to read. Uh, so uh, to get your brain ready, um, I mean, do you ever watch a movie without reading the title? Usually we check the title of the movies that we watch because we want to know what we're going to watch, right? So read the title of the passage that you're about to be tested on, right? It makes sense. So read the title, 
visualize it um, and uh, think critically about it. Asking what, why, how, okay? All right, uh, so let's do that. Let's take a look at today's passage. Let's take a look at today's title. Ooh, list of headings. Uh, that's everybody's favorite. Um, no, I know list of headings, true, false, not given. People tend to dislike these questions because they tend to do poorly on them. Um, one reason being that they're hard to skim read for or impossible to skim read for. So uh, skim reading, scanning, not the right strategy. Okay, uh, so we've got some list of headings. Don't worry about the list of headings yet. Okay, uh, let's take a look at the uh, title instead. Okay, so um, here is the title. A Territorial Dispute Between Friends, Canada and the United States. Mm-hmm. All right, so what does it mean territorial dispute? What does this word mean? Okay, that we should definitely try to understand before we uh, move on. So uh, dispute, territorial dispute. Anahita says belonging to the land um, Elizabeth, no agreement is not really related here. Yeah, uh, Alexi, when you say an argument about a certain part of territory, uh, always try to paraphrase. So when you think about territory, think about, you know, um, a different word. Okay. Chen, better. Uh, Chen says dispute about boundaries. So Chen, you're doing, uh, if you combine with uh, Alexi, okay. Uh, then you've got the right idea, all right? So an argument over boundaries, right? It's an age-old disagreement by uh, people, okay? So an argument over land boundaries. So who's got what land? Sure, yeah. That's a classic, right? Since the dawn of man, since the beginning of civilization or of even pre-civilization, we have argued over territory. Um, why? So now you know that territory means a piece of land or water, right? Uh, why do countries do it? What's the main reason? Domenico, why are they in disagreement about borders? So again, students, just a couple of these thoughts, these clear thoughts uh, regarding the title before you engage the text can really help uh, to understand the text better and just to answer a lot of the questions a lot better. So this is a very important strategy for your IELTS exam to read the title and think about it a little, little bit. Alexi says, because of unfair boundaries in the past. Um, yeah, so different perspectives of history, sure, but that's not the main reason. Uh, when you're thinking about answers to the why question, try to identify number one, okay? It's really important. Aim to identify the top answer. So, and, and you know it, like when you get the top answer, um, you're kind of like, oh yeah, of course, that's answer number one. So historical disagreement, like that used to be ours, no, that used to be ours. Um, and it's the same, like uh, if you think about the Gaza Strip, for example, Palestine, Israel, um, if you think about, um, a lot of the disputes in the Middle East, a lot of the disputes in Europe, a lot of the disputes in Africa. It's the same answer. Let's see if anybody gets it. Angel says, I think it's 
because they believe that according to history they have more right about certain parts of the land yeah but not really so um, humans aren't that ambitious most of us anyway so we're not like oh that used to be mine especially canada u.s there's so much land right like why argue over you know a few kilometers there you go carolina that's it right so the top answer is for resources i want what you have right um yeah that's it right i mean we want territory because we're physical living human creatures and we have needs and those needs include food water power sometimes right so yeah exactly dominico natural resources right uh what kind of natural resources do you think they fight over so what do you think like what do you, what kind of natural resources do you think um canadians americans would fight over right angel i bet you that even azerbaijan and armenia it's mostly natural resources the land that they're fighting over has oil or water or trees right yeah absolutely um and uh in the case of yeah food resources for sure yep fish right okay for instance um so yes uh fertile land even right okay definitely good so um and how do they do it so how do countries fight for land so what are the ways that they fight so we've got the what why and the how and again students um, when you're at home and you're getting ready for the IELTS exam training your brain to think in this way about concepts is extremely important okay alexi says not only wars but also negotiations yeah so physical conflict right like war and intellectual conflict right so treaties and negotiations okay so war is actually the final uh, kind of step that humans take. Um, most of the time, and I think, you know, the average person every single day, we don't pay as much attention to this, but most of the uh, conflict or most of the debate, uh, thankfully, uh, takes place intellectually and not physically, right? Uh, most of it. So... All right, uh, good. So hopefully you have these concepts and now you're good to go. So a territorial dispute between France, Canada, and the United States. Now you understand what it is, why it could be, how it likely works. You've got these ideas. Um, and then of course you look at the questions. So students, this is reading. So make sure to um, read with me. And uh, if possible, read aloud, okay? Aloud means so that you can hear yourself. So don't just hear my voice, but hear your own voice, okay? All right, so a uh, list of headings. I'm going to teach you how to do this. Some of you know how to do this, some of you don't. So I'm going to walk you through list of headings strategy, okay? All right, um, step number one. This is the only uh, question that you should read before you read the passage. And that makes sense, right? Um, it is the only question type that is given before um, the passage in the IELTS. Okay. Uh, number two, this is the only question that you should answer as you read or while you read. Uh, what that means is all other questions you should answer after you read the passage. 
And now with that, many of you also realize that yes, you need to read the passage. So if you're looking for a band 5.5, maybe a six, then you don't need to read the whole passage. Uh, if you're looking for a band um, 6.5, 7, 8, 9, uh, you need to read the whole passage. Now, if you're one of those people, and I've heard this before, that's like, Adrian, but I don't read the whole passage and I can still get 7. Okay, well, here's a tip. If, you re if you're that fast at skimming and scanning for information, then if you actually read the passage and then answer the questions, you'll get a higher score than 7. Okay, so for those higher level students, so upper intermediate advanced English users, read the passage. Okay, that's the best way to get a high score. I, Carolina did that in, uh, in her last test, I know, and she did just fantastic. All right, so um, for this question, list of headings, you want to uh, answer these while you read, and I will show you how, okay? Um, so the, the, the uh, first step, is to read um, each uh, list of heading and paraphrase it as much as you can. Now, uh, you want to do that on paper at home before the test while you practice, okay, and in your head during the official exam. Okay, I mean, you probably don't have enough time to uh, do this uh, on paper. Okay, you'll run out of time. So um, let's do that. Let me show you what I mean by this first step. Okay, so again, this is the only question type that you will see before the passage. All other questions will always follow the passage. There's logical reason for this. The uh, exam makers know that this type of question, it makes sense to do it while you read and to get it before. Uh, why? Because these are the topic sentences or the topic concepts, I should say, for each of the paragraphs, okay? So it gives you an idea of each of the paragraphs. When you do a good job with list of headings, it helps you to answer all of the other questions correctly, okay? So for instance, here we have the Treaty of St. Petersburg between Russia and America, okay? So we want to paraphrase that, okay? The uh, agreement of Saint, uh, you can't really paraphrase names, right? Although Saint Petersburg has changed its name a few times through history. Uh, the agreement uh, of Saint Petersburg um, between Russia and USA. Okay, um, so that's the paraphrase. Okay, that's another way to say it. Now, Members, uh, try to uh, paraphrase while I'm doing this, okay? All right. Yeah, Lexi, there's, <laughs> there are definitely disputes for Canada and Ireland, and there was a Can Canadian and uh, Spanish dispute as well in the last few years. So Canada has a lot of land, a lot of oceans, so we get into some uh, situations sometimes. Yeah. Um, yeah, Domenico, that's right. When negotiations fall apart, they resort to conflict. All right, Alexi says, the agreement of St. Petersburg between Russia and the U.S. Yes, Anahita, good. Chani, good. Uh, fishing and mining for gold in the Alaska Panhandle. Well, that's a tricky one, um, unless you know the Alaska Panhandle. Beautiful part of the world, by the way, if anybody ever visits. There are lots of cruise ships go there. So, uh, fishing, uh, let's just, we can simplify this a little bit. So we can say uh, natural resources, right? Some of you said this. For food and minerals in um, Western North America. Okay. Now, they'll probably use the words uh, Alaska Panhandle because they don't expect you to uh, know that that's uh, Western North America. Uh, the Alaska Panhandle, by the way, everybody, is just uh, uh, a little bit north of where I am. Um, I'm very close to the Alaskan Panhandle. It's called a Panhandle because it looks like the handle of a pan, like a frying pan. Okay, uh, indigenous rights in the Salmon Treaty of 1990 or 1985, so uh, First uh, Nations. 
Um, indigenous are the people who live here originally and the uh, indigenous people of Canada are also referred to as the First Nations of Canada. So uh, the First uh, Nations um, laws uh, in the uh, Salmon Agreement of 1985. Sure. Again, so just as quickly as you can, as best as you can at home, you're doing this on paper in the exam. You're um, doing this in your head. The dispute is adjudicated. Uh, the conflict or the disagreement is discussed. Let me keep it simple. Okay. Uh, treaty draws ambiguous lines uh, and agreement creates unclear borders. Okay. Ambiguous means that it's not clear. So make sure when you're learning new vocabulary while we do this, write it down. Okay. So ambiguous is definitely a good piece of vocabulary to know. It means it's unclear. We don't know. Like, is it there? Or is it over there? An uncertain future for the region's sovereignty. Okay. Um, a volatile. Uncertain means we don't know if it's going to be that way or another way. So a volatile uh, future uh, for the uh, area's independence. Region is like an area, a part of land. Uh, sovereignty means independence or freedom. Okay. All right. Uh, Chayani says, Native rights in the Salmon Agreement of 1985. Yes, good. Okay, that works. Uh, Alexi, ambiguous means unclear. So it means like we're not certain. Okay. Angel, um, aboriginal means native. I think you've confused a word there. Ambiguous does not mean native, angel. Okay. All right, an unheard voice in the battle for sovereignty. So a muted. Unheard means you can't hear it. It doesn't have sound, which also is muted. Uh, maybe on your remote control, you've seen that for the TV, the mute button. Uh, the mute button is what turns the sound off. Um, a muted party uh, in the fight for freedom. Okay. A muted party. Haida Gwaii and Prince of Wales Islands. There's not much we can do there. Okay, those are names, so we'll leave that. Uh, overlapping fishing claims. Okay, so conflicting rights to fishing. That's one that Canada fights about all the time. Okay, a territory desired by many nations. So a land wanted by many countries. Okay, now why am I doing this, right? Like you're thinking like, okay, well, why is Adrian paraphrasing all of these like this? Uh, the reason for it is that in the IELTS, they use paraphrasing so you don't see the same words. And that's one of the reasons skimming scanning is not effective because you don't see the same words in the passage that you see in the uh, questions and answers. So you have to, you know, go out on your own and think about what, these mean, right? You have to understand it and you have to interpret. Interpretation is a big part of success on IELTS and paraphrasing is the foundation for interpretation. Okay. All right. So those are good. So that's the list of headings. We'll come back to those in a, in, in a moment. Uh, now your next step for the passage is uh, you want to look at um, the other questions and see what's going on. So here it says match the following people or peoples with facts about them from the passage. 
Again, you want to read with me here, everybody. And then it says, note by the way, NB, note by the way, you may use any letter more than once. So uh, you can use these as multiple times. So salmon fishers, indigenous peoples, Russian explorers, international tribunal participants, whatever that means, right? Now, all of this information is somewhere in the passage. So I am going to read this, okay? I read questions that are somewhere in the passage. So read with me. Had various interests with respect to the Alaska boundary dispute until recently lacked a voice in sovereignty discussions. The first inhabitants of the land in question made up of multiple nationalities in the region, including indigenous people. Okay, good. All right. So I know that there's going to be talk about fishers, talk about Russians, talk about uh, conflict, freedom or independence, um, people who are first there. So it gives me a lot of good ideas. Okay, now uh, complete each sentence with the correct ending. So this one here is tricky because these endings are can be quite confusing. They can be really off topic. So I don't worry about that. Okay. The first half of the statement, these, they're going to be in the passage. So I'm going to read these just so my I, my head is thinking about this information, but not the choices, okay? So again, the choices, no thank you, all right? Um, but the uh, first half of the statement, that's okay. Okay, why? Because this is in the passage, this is not necessarily in the passage. At least three of them aren't, okay? Or wrong. So, uh, Novo Arkhangelsk with was a Russian settlement located. Okay, the battle between the Russians and British. All right, the Alaska Purchase resulted among other effects. Okay, good. So Alaska was sold. There was conflict between Russians and British. All right, good. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to read the passage. So I'm going to read the passage, and right now. I'm just going to read the whole passage because I'm going to uh, solve the list of headings questions with you members, okay? So you're going to do this. I'm going to guide you. Uh, but for practice purpose, we're going to read the passage together, all right? So that's what we're doing right now. Okay, here we go. Let's buckle down and get to reading, all right? Read lots before your IELTS exam. Here we go, everybody. Let's do this. A, a territorial dispute between friends, Canada and the United States. What do gold and salmon have in common? Believe it or not, they are both the causes of an international boundary dispute that has been simmering, simmering for over a hundred years and has involved Canada, the United States, the United Kingdom and Russia. The story of the Alaska boundary dispute begins with the Russian exploration and colonization of the region from the 1780s until 1867. The Russians had set up settlements such as Novo Arkhangelsk 1799 along the panhandle of Russian America the long and thin southernmost area of the region which bordered British territory at the time and borders Canadian territory today. During the 19th century, Russian explorers, fishermen, whalers, and traders populated the area as it was rich in both salmon and sea otters, the later of which was an incredibly valuable resource in the European fur trade of the time. The presence of British and American explorers also increased during this time. The Americans had an interest in extending their influence from California northward along the Pacific coast. And the British had an interest in pushing back what they felt was Russian incursion on British lands. Perhaps worst of all, the indigenous Haida and Thinglet peoples were caught in the middle of the burgeoning conflict. Their traditional and ancestral lands would be fought over for over 200 years with little regard for their sovereignty. 1825's Treaty of St. Petersburg between the British and Russians set the boundary between Russian America, 
modern Alaska, USA, and British North America, modern Yukon Territory, British Columbia, Canada. But unfortunately, the agreement did not firmly set the boundary in the Panhandle region. This ambiguity did not matter for decades. In fact, following the American purchase of Russian America in 1867, known as the Alaska Purchase, the Canadian government wanted to clarify the Alaska-British Columbia border. The American government rejected the proposal because it did not matter to them enough to warrant the cost of such a survey. This all changed when gold was discovered in the nearby Yukon Territory, belonging to Canada in 1897. The Klondike Gold Rush transformed a simmering dispute into an inferno. Canada wanted a direct route through Canadian territory to the Pacific Ocean to get their gold onto ships and transported to market. The United States, meanwhile, wanted to keep control of the coastal territory. The two sides could not come up with an agreement and therefore the dispute went to an international tribunal in 1903, a kind of court where a supposedly unbiased group of people would decide the issue. The jury was made up of six men, no women, three Americans, two Canadians and one Briton. Indigenous voices were not heard. The Americans were all politicians, while the Canadians were non-partisan jurists, lawyers and scholars. And the Briton was Lord Alverston, Lord Chief Justice of England. The Americans and Canadian representatives favoured their own government's claims, so it was up to Lord Alverston, the Canadian public's, to the Canadian public's disbelief, Lord Alverston decided in favour of the American claim. Canada was a British Dominion at the time, a partly independent nation with very strong ties to Britain, and Canadians felt betrayed by their colonial government. Canada had lost the dispute but refused to sign the resulting document. Though the decision became international law, Canadians did not endorse it and the dispute over the region continues to this day. Today, there is no gold rush in the region. Rather, there is salmon, and a lot of it. Fishing rights are what matter in regards to the Alaska boundary dispute today. Central to this debate is the strait known as Dixon Entrance, which lies between Haida Gwaii, Canada, and Prince of Wales Island, USA. The 1903 agreement tried to settle this aspect of the dispute, but it again failed. Today, the United States claims fishing rights to the midway point between the northern edge of Haida Gwaii and the southern edge of Prince of Wales Island, where, while Canada claims virtually all of the marine territory south of Prince Edward Island. Over the past 40 years, there have been numerous minor skirmishes in these waters. These have been mediated by short-term agreements between Canada and the U.S., the Pacific Salmon Treaty of 1985, for example, but they have never been definitively solved. To this day, numerous breaches of sovereign Canadian territory in the region were reported or are reported by Canadian fishers. The American fishers, however, believe they are fishing in their national waters. The Pacific Salmon Treaty expired on 31st December 2019, four years ago, and it is unclear what will become of the disputed waters. Hmm. Lost in the friction between colonial powers over the centuries has been the voice of the indigenous people of the region. The Haida and the Tlingit have been fishing the area for countless thousands of years and not only have they had their territory ripped from their hands but they have also had their ancestral rights to fish their waters diminished as well. Today the Canadian government aims to mitigate these wrongs by recognizing and formalizing into law indigenous rights to fish in the area in whatever future agreement comes to be between Canada 
and the United States. Okay, so uh, maybe a lot of you know new words there, and um, of course there's a lot of geography here, right, of uh, a part of the world. Uh, if you didn't understand all of it, it's okay, all right? The goal of the reading is not to have 100% clarity. Um, it's just to understand as much as possible. And when you can understand 60-70% of the text, you can do really well on the IELTS, okay? So you can get up into the band 8, even 9 range, okay? All right. Anahita, you don't have to read a lot slower, okay? You can read a little bit slower than that, like maybe 20% slower, but you shouldn't read much slower. So you should take about 10 minutes, 11 minutes from the 20 minutes to read the passage. You should leave about eight, nine, 10 minutes to answer the questions. That's a good balance, okay? If you're reading a lot slower than that, um, when you read too slowly, it's easy to lose the meaning of what you're reading as well. So you need to have fluency. Now students, IELTS is, a, you know, it's a test of intermediate to advanced English. So if you're reading really slowly, then you need to improve your fluency, your reading fluency, okay? All right, so let's uh, get back to these list of headings questions. So uh, again, just a quick recap, right? Um, list of headings questions, we read those questions, paraphrase them uh, before we read the passage. Now, the next step, okay, so second is to uh, read each passage, ask and answer, what is this passage about? Okay. Your answer should be concise. Okay. Uh, then uh, what you do in the third step is match your answer with the closest choice. Okay, so I'm going to show you this and we're going to do it together for the first two um, paragraphs and then uh, for the next ones, members, you're going to read and uh, you will do this, okay? So um, let's do this, everybody. I'll show you what I mean, okay? And you'll realize that it's not terribly bad when you know what you're doing, okay? So here we go. We'll read the passage paragraph by paragraph again, and we'll answer the questions for the list of headings. Once we do that, the rest of the questions will be fairly straightforward. You'll see what I mean, okay? So they'll, they'll kind of lend themselves, as we say, okay? All right, um, here we go. So again, a territorial dispute between friends, Canada and the United States. Mm, okay, here we go. Uh, what do gold and salmon have in common? Believe it or not, they are both the causes of an international boundary dispute that has been simmering for over a hundred years and has involved Canada, the United States, the United Kingdom, and Russia. The story of the Alaska boundary dispute begins with the Russian exploration and colonization of the region from the 1780s until 1867. The Russians had set up settlements such as Novo Arkhangelsk, 1799, along the panhandle of Russian America, the long and thin southernmost area of the region, which bordered British territory at the time and borders Canadian territory today. During the 19th century, Russian explorers, fishermen, whalers, and traders populated the area as it was rich in both salmon and sea otters, the latter of which was an incredibly valuable resource in the European fur trade of the time. The presence of British and American explorers also increased during the time, this time. The Americans had an interest in extending their influence from California northward along the Pacific coast, and the British had an interest in pushing back what they felt was Russian incursion on British lands. 
Perhaps worst of all, the indigenous Haida and Tinglet peoples were caught in the middle of the burgeoning conflict. Their traditional and ancestral lands would be fought over for over 200 years with little regard for their sovereignty. Anonymous, welcome to our group of members. Okay, um, so uh, here we go, everybody. Um, I ask myself, what is this introductory paragraph about? Okay. Give me an answer to this question, everybody. I don't let's see how well you do and then I'll I'll tell you if I agree or not. So, big long introduction, right? Uh, by the way, introductions don't need to be short. I don't know there's this weird uh, thought out there, especially with task 2 writings that introductions have to be short. Depends on what you write. Some some introductions are much longer. So, this is a long one. Woo, long one, but it makes sense why? Okay, Anahita says, this is what Anahita says. Anahita says, every country wants to have access to the natural resources. Oana, nice to see you joining. Oana says, um, it presents shortly the conflict of some details. Uh, Oana, so uh, yes, so some um, conflicts between certain countries, right? Okay. So this is what Oana says the paragraph is about. I'm not sure if I completely agree that that's the main. So when you're thinking about what it is about, it's the main idea. Okay. Um, all right. Anybody else? Chayani says it's about the root of international dis boundary disputes. Okay. So notice, students, that we've got some different answers here, and ideally, we would have kind of similar answers, okay? So in a perfect world, we all get mostly the same idea out of a paragraph, okay? I'll tell you what my answer is, and then see if you agree with me. Um, and you'll notice that's, that there are some answers that are better than others here. So what is this introductory paragraph about? Um, it is about uh, land that is desired by indigenous Russia, Canada, or Britain, Canada and the US, uh, namely the Alaska Panhandle. Okay, so when I read this paragraph, it sounds to me like there's this piece of land and everybody wants a piece of it. Everybody wants, a, everybody's like, eh, that should be mine. Wait, everybody, wait, 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 why was already here? I'm the indigenous people of the land. Why are you all coming over here saying it's yours, right? And so I think the closest one so far um, is Anahita here with uh, everyone wants access uh, to natural resources. I, I mean, that's the root cause of it, right? But it's that one piece of land in particular. It's that Western, Northern, Alaskan chunk of land that's up there, right? Um, and everybody wants a piece of that, right? So now this answer is not concise enough, okay? So I want this to be more concise, okay? How can I make that more concise? Well, I could say, for example, um, many groups of people want the same land okay I'm just gonna make it concise because list of headings are concise so many groups of people here want the same land is basically what we're talking about here right that's what this um, 
introductory paragraph states. So now let's see if any of these choices match uh, what we're dealing with here, okay? Erase these real quick. I think those were left over from before. All right. Um, so hopefully nobody saw the cheat sheet. Um, all right. Uh, so let's see. Any of those um, match with what I'm saying? Okay. So number one, always look at the original. So the Treaty of St. Petersburg, no. Uh, number two, fishing and mining for gold, no. Uh, let me, well, I don't really wanna take out the paraphrasing here. Let me just try to do it like this and then we'll get a lot more space here, but you'll see the choices clearly anyway, okay? So let me help you out here, clarify these choices to see which number is which one with the paraphrasing. Okay, there, that's how they look, okay? So is it the Treaty of St. Petersburg? No, it's nothing about that, it's not detailing that. Fishing and mining for gold? Not really. Um, indigenous rights? Man, nah, it's a lot more than that. The dispute is adjudicated? Mama, nah. Uh, an uncertain future? Well, uh, an unheard voice? Man, not so much. Haida Gwaii? No. Uh, overlapping fishing claims, a territory desired by many nations. Yes, now it becomes clear, right? And many of you are realizing that's X. Uh, that matches the closest with what I'm saying, right? So X it is, and that would be your correct answer on the exam, okay? So that's how you do list of headings. All right, let's do one more together, and then I'll open it up for everybody, okay? And I can see now you're all like, yeah, okay, I get it, I get it, all right? So it's the main idea. If you get stuck on a detail, you're going to lose the mark, okay? All right, uh, B, let's do it. So here we go. Um, 1825's Treaty of St. Petersburg between the British and Russians set the boundary between Russian America, modern Alaska, USA, and British North America, modern Yukon Territory, and British Columbia, Canada. But unfortunately, the agreement did not firmly set the boundary in the Panhandle region. This ambiguity did not matter for decades. In fact, following the American purchase of Russian America in 1867, known as the Alaska Purchase, the Canadian government wanted to clarify the Alaska-British Columbia border. The American government rejected the proposal because it did not matter to them enough to warrant the cost of such a survey. This all changed when gold was discovered in the nearby Yukon Territory belonging to Canada in 1897. Uh, okay, so what is uh, body paragraph one about? Now again, the main idea, right? So what's the main idea of this paragraph? Everybody, I don't wanna spoil the fun, you tell me. So when you read this, and you don't have to understand every word, but there are some keywords for sure that you should understand. Domenico, now that is concise. <laughs> I have to take that answer, Domenico, this is too great. All right, so this is Domenico's answer here. Domenico says, one word, ambiguity. Now careful, one word answers are maybe a bit too simple, um, but you're on the right track, Domenico. Ambiguity. Anahita says the treaty didn't have a good result. What was the bad result, Anahita? That's the topic here, okay? Fong says, America rejected the Canadian negotiations about the border. That's the right idea too, Fong, but it's a little bit, yeah, okay, Chayani, I like that one. So Chayani says this, a vague agreement. That's a good one, Chayani, nice. Yeah, it's like, hey guys, uh, let's figure out where the line is uh, here. And then they're like, well, 
It's expensive to figure that out. We don't want to spend money on that. Oh, wait, there's gold there. Hey, wait a second, guys. We need to figure that out. Uh, yeah, we don't need it until we need it, right? Um, so, okay. I think Domenico and Chiani are on the right track here. Okay. And you can see here, right? So, um, unfortunately, the agreement did not firmly set the boundary. Okay. This ambiguity did not matter for decades. The Canadian government wanted to clarify the border. Okay. The American government rejected the proposal. It did not matter to them enough. All right? So notice those key pieces of information. All of these together equal ambiguity or uh, the vague agreement that Chani has put there just underneath, right? Okay, uh, match it up. So which one here um, is, um, is the most accurate match? The Treaty of St. Petersburg? No. Fishing and mining? Not so much. Uh, indigenous rights? Mm, the dispute is adjudicated? Not so much. A treaty draws ambiguous lines? Mm, that looks pretty good. An uncertain future for the region, an unheard voice, Haida Gwaii, overlapping territory. Um, so it definitely looks like the uh, correct answer is Elizabeth, absolutely not number four. Domenico, um, I think you meant number five, right? Yes, exactly. So number five, treaty draws ambiguous lines. So they make an agreement, but we've got no idea what it is, right? This word here, ambiguous, that's your signal. Okay. All right. Okay, uh, members, let's do this together. So let's uh, do volunteering through the website um, and let's read and answer some of these questions, okay? Uh, don't worry, I'm here to guide you, be brave and volunteer. So everybody, um, follow the instructions that uh, Chen or Carolina will put into the chat here for you, okay? Uh, these are the instructions for volunteering. Oh, that's wrong document. Um, here are the instructions for volunteering, for reading. The first and most important step is go to the website, aehelp.com. Uh, Chen and Carolina have put the instructions into the chat for everybody, so follow those instructions. All right, uh, so we're at the website uh, to get all of our reading materials, all of our strategies, videos for true, false, not given, and list of headings. Join the premium package, pay a few dollars, get access for a lifetime, okay? Right up there, we'll help you. Uh, and then uh, go to the My Student account, okay? Uh, in here, uh, you can click on Student Partner Speaking. It's one of the many tools on the website. Uh, and then uh, once you're in here, you can volunteer. So you will see me in here. My handle will be master and you can send me a message by clicking the blue envelope and saying I want to read I want to volunteer okay all right Anahita is the first one to do it here Anahita nice and quick are you ready okay uh, if you've had the page open for a while it's probably a good idea to refresh it Ahmed I see you in there as well that's great hang in there Sir. Hi, Anahita. How are you, sir? I am doing quite well. Thank you for asking. How are you? I'm also doing well, sir. Thanks, sir. Thank okay. you. Okay, great. Um, let's get into some reading. 
So you are going to read the second body paragraph, C, and you will see it on the screen in just a couple seconds. YouTube is uh, six seconds delay. So once you see it, you can go ahead and start reading from the Klondike Gold Rush. Uh, the uh, Klondike Gold Rush transformed a slimmering dispute into, a, into an uh, interferio. Canada wanted a direct uh, route through Canadian territory to the Pacific Ocean to get their gold onto ships and transport it to the market. The United States, uh, meanwhile, wanted to keep control of the coastal territory. The two sides could not come up with an agreement, and therefore the dispute uh, went to an international tribunal in 1903. A kind of court where a supposedly unbiased group of people would decide the issue. The jury was made up of six men, no women, three Americans, two Canadians, and one uh, Briton. Indigenous uh, voices were not heard. Uh, the Americans were all politicians, while the Canadians were none. Uh, Persians, uh, jurists, lawyers, and scholars, and uh, the Briton was the Briton was Lord uh, Albertison. Uh, uh, decided in favor of the American claim. Canada was a British uh, dominion at the time. Uh, course, just a second. Um, you're reading a little bit too fast and I hate you jump there, I think, when I, the screen moved for you. So just read from uh, the Britain was Lord Alverson, Lord Chief Justice of England. Okay. Be careful. Okay. Always focus on uh, your reading and the context. Okay. Not just getting the words out. So pay attention. Okay. Uh, go ahead and continue from there, please. And the Britain was Lord Alverson. Uh, the Britain was Lord uh, Alverson, Lord Chief Justice of England. The Americans and Can Canadian representatives uh, favored their own government's claims, so it was up to Lord Alverson. To the Canadian public's uh, disbelief, Lord Alverson decided in favor of the American claim. Canada was a British dominion at the time, a partially independent nation with very strong ties to Britain and Canadian felt betrayed by their colonial government. Canada had lost the dispute but refused to sign the resulting uh, document. Though the decision became international law, Canadians did not endorse it and the dispute over the region uh, continues to this day. Okay, yeah. good. All right, um, Anahita, what is this uh, paragraph about? Uh, I have two choices, I think. And one is that uh, indigenous people uh, could not ac uh, have access to their rights. And the other is uh, uh, that uh, 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 that uh, the negotiations, negotiations uh, did not have a good result. Um, I'm not sure where you got the... Oh, the, the indigenous. Yeah, that was just a small detail here. The indigenous voices were not heard. That's not mostly what you read about. What did you, when you, so when you're always, when you're thinking of list, list of headings, you have to think about the main idea. So what did you read about mostly? So what was 90% of this paragraph about? About Canada and uh, this, that, uh, uh, Lord Adverson and uh, some natural resources and, uh, um, I can also ask this, who was this um, paragraph about? Um, this was about the land uh, and who? Uh, about the uh, uh, politicians and governments, governors. How many people? How many people are really mentioned in this? Six people. Um, six people. Six men. Yeah, so six men. So there's one two three three of them were americans right politicians yeah. okay yeah. so usa there we go right um there was one britain lord alverston right yes and there were three canadian or two canadians right yeah six total and they were doing what they were arguing right about who owns this uh, piece of land in an official way, right? Mm -hmm. So keep your thoughts simple. One reason, Anahita, why a lot of people get the uh, list of headings and the true false not given why they get it wrong is because they overcomplicate their thoughts. So in this paragraph, it's keep it simple. It's six men.
who have this official kind of court agreement or court-like situation to figure out who owns this land, right? Yeah. Okay, so keep your thoughts simple when you visualize it. IELTS, so I think, uh, you know, sometimes people think that IELTS tries to be tricky or tries to trick the candidate. It's not true. IELTS isn't this, um, this exam to try to trick you or to try to make you fail. Okay, that's not the goal of IELTS. The goal of IELTS is just to present you with information that you could see in school or in the workplace or even in everyday life and to check if you can you know understand it and then use it right so simple is is the best approach it's not easy but you want to keep it simple so uh, in this case what is this paragraph about your answer should be something like um, an official um, political um, agreement or treaty with six people in it okay something like that uh, to decide who owns the land right okay. so that's that's the simple answer here an official political treaty or argument with six people to decide whose land is this is it Canadian is it American who's it whose is it okay now okay. Um, if you don't understand that then you have to ask yourself like why am I not understanding or what why why am I um, misunderstanding the information okay um, so do I need to read it again if I mix my thoughts yeah but before you read it again you should ask yourself like you should reflect okay so good learning good studying is always reflection so for example you said like uh, indigenous people um, and you should ask yourself like why did I think that okay well here um, we have this uh, piece of indigenous voices were not heard and yes it's unfortunate it's there but it's just one sentence right so you get you can't get stuck on one sentence when you have this whole other piece of information here right so the question is is what is all of this about right and all of this is about this discussion among these six politicians and people to decide this land right and and then the details of that discussion but that's again details like not knowing who or when or where or why right so it's about this official discussion now once you get that you'll be able to match it up so take a look at the choices and um, you should be able to figure out which one it is so uh, you'll see the choices here um, and start reading them when you get to the one that you think is the right one then let me know okay so read them nice and loud for everybody and then when you get to the one that you think is hey that's the one then um then say i think it's this one because this is the closest to what we just talked about okay so go for it uh, the treaty of st petersburg between uh, russia and america it's a little bit close fishing and mine for gold in alaska it's not indigenous rice in the salmon treaty it's not uh, but indigenous, no, it's not because the year was not mentioned, I think. Um, and it's detail. We, we said that details, it's not going to be the correct one. So yeah. indigenous rights, it's not about this one. It's, that's, that's a detail. It's not the right one. Yes. Um, the dispute is uh, adjudicated. Uh, this is closer. Mm -hmm. And a treaty uh, draws ambiguous lines uh, it's not an uncertain feature it's not uh, an unheard voice it's also not hey the uh, guy and prince of Wales it's not so uh, I have one I and uh, uh, so Roman numeral four I think is what you're going for the IV right I, this one, the dispute uh, is adjudicated. The no, the disagreement is discussed. Yes. Yes. So the disagreement is discussed is my paraphrase, right? That's why paraphrasing is so important because that gives you more certainty and more clarification. And you're right. That is. That's the correct answer. It's Roman numeral four. Okay. So okay. IV Roman numeral four the correct answer you mark it and then you go on okay 
So that's how you do it. Now, Anahita, uh, I'm noticing this uh, danger in your list of headings where you're paying attention to details like indigenous rights. So if if we took out in the Salmon Treaty of 1985 and we just had indigenous rights, it's still the wrong answer. This is not about indigenous rights. It's about discussing ownership of the land. That's the main idea here. So be careful. You're always looking for the main idea with list of okay. headings. Okay. okay. All right, thank you so much, Anahita. Keep uh, practicing these, okay, in this way. Thank you, sir. Thank All you. Right. Have a good day. You too. Bye, Anahita. All right, uh, I'm just going to shift, refresh my page here to reconnect to the servers because I think a lot of us are pinging the servers. Um, Ahmed, let me reach out to you. I saw that you volunteered. Let's see if you want to take on the next body paragraph. So are you ready? Okay. Ahmed, if you're there, let me know, and then uh, and then you can jump in for uh, body paragraph three, which will be D. Yes. Thanks for the thumbs up for Anahita, everybody. It's great. Hello, Sher. Hi, Ahmed. Good to hear your voice. Hello. How are you, Sher? I am doing great. How are you? You're in Indonesia, right? Yes, 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 I am. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing great too. Good. All right, uh, Ahmed, uh, some reading this time. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, sure. So you'll see uh, paragraph D come up on the screen here pretty quick. Um, once you see it come up, just start reading. So today there is no gold rush. Go for it. Whenever you're ready. Okay. Okay. Uh, today there's no gold rush in the region. Rather, there's a sal there is salmon and a lot of it. Fishing rights are what matter in regards to the Alaska boundary dispute today. Central to this debate is the strait known as Dyson Entrance, which lies between Haida Gwaii, Canada, and Prince of Wales Island, USA. The, nine, the 93 agreement tried to settle this aspect of the dispute but it again failed. Today, the United States claims fishing rights to the midway point between the northern edge of Haida Gwaii and the southern edge of Prince of Wales Islands, while Canada claims virtually all of the marine territories south of Prince of Edward Island. Should be Wales, it's a typo. All right, um, nice and quick here, Ahmed. What is this paragraph about? So uh, the paragraph about uh, because uh, there's no gold anymore, uh, but uh, there are a lot of salmon, and they are debate about this area, this fishing area. Okay, the fishing strikes. Okay, good, good, good. Let's stop there for a second, Ahmed. So all of what you said, take out the most important piece and give it to me in like a four or five word answer. So what is this paragraph about? The paragraph about uh, the debate about uh, of the uh, the claims, the debate about the claims of fishing rights in the perfect. Stop, 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 uh, stop, 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 stop. There, that's enough. Okay, so debate about fishing rights, right? If we had to just, if somebody was like, just give it to me in like three words or four words, we'd say fighting over fishing <laughs> yeah. my fish no my fish <laughs> um, yeah all right this okay. is my area that's my, not yours exactly my fishing hole no my fishing hole people yeah. do it it's fun you know we do it on the national level and the oceans yeah yeah but we actually do it even on the personal level i don't know if you do do you do any fishing Ahmed? yeah yeah absolutely and oh, when i was a child did you ever get into a fight over whose fishing spot <laughs> yes yes absolutely when i was a child and <laughs> My friends and my, uh, and I go to some fishing uh, in the river. Sometimes we just uh, debate about where's this is my place. Don't come here. Right? Oh no right. no, this is my place. No, you just come in my yeah. areas. <laughs> yeah, river's yeah. not river's not big enough for both of us. <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, so go ahead. I'm just gonna bring up uh, a few of the choices here. Um, read them and tell me which one is the right answer. Okay, I will try to read from the first. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah read from the uh, ones that you see. Yeah, because you'll get it. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure you'll get this one pretty quick. Uh, 
and certain features for the region's very volatile nature of the independent uh, overlapping fishing claims conflicting rights to fishing. Yeah. I think the answer is nine. Yeah, pretty clear. IX. Quite clear, right? Yeah. So main idea. Again, it, once you, so, and this is the trick, and everybody, this is the trick with these list of headings. Once you have the right kind of thinking and you take mm -hmm. these steps, these list of headings actually become favored questions. So, yeah. um, you know, I, I, I meet with a lot of IELTS candidates where at, at the beginning, they're like, oh, I hate list of headings. I always get them wrong. And then once they start to understand the concept and then do them correctly, they're like, oh, I love passages with list of headings because I get them correct. And then mm -hmm. the list of headings actually help me with all the other questions in the passage because they tell me where the paragraphs are that I need to look for that yeah. information, right? Because it gives you the heading for that paragraph. So. So mm -hmm. a list of headings questions, when you do them correctly, can kind of become like your friend in the aisles. <laughs> so, um, all right. Um, yeah. Ahmed, uh, good. Thank you. So uh, no fighting over fishing by the riverside, okay? Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm just, I just uh, lucky to get the easiest one. <laughs> right. Well, we always want the spot where the other guy catches the fish, right? When we see our friend yeah. catch a big fish, like, hey, that was my spot. That should have been my yeah. fish, right? Yeah, yeah. All right. That's really fun. Uh -huh. It is. All right, Ahmed, have an awesome rest of the day. Thanks for, thanks for reading. Thanks for the opportunity, sir. Thank you. Bye. Have a nice Bye. day. Thank you. All right, that was Ahmed. Give him a thumbs up. That was great. Yeah. No fighting over fishing, people. Fish move. They move. Sometimes it's just luck. All right. Okay. Uh, Chayani, also from Indonesia. Let's see if Chinese here. Are you ready? All right. Chayani, if you're there, give me a sign. Yes. Okay, Chayani. Lots of ringing, Chani, but I don't hear you, so I'm not sure. You might have to refresh too, Chani. Um, try it out, and then I'll get back to you for the next paragraph, maybe. Oh, you missed the button. Okay. <laughs> All right, Chani. Look for that button. <laughs> hey, Adrian. Hi, Chani. All right. How did you miss the button? Um, because I'm using mobile right now, so uh, I accidentally use, I mean, press the X button. I see, I see. Yeah, I mean, I love mobile, and I think it's the way the world is obviously going, but uh, the screens are still just too small. We just can't make those screens big enough, right? Yeah. So, we're all like... <laughs> I don't know. I think one day we might have like these special mobiles where the screen becomes big, like a projection or something again, but uh, the future people will laugh at us. Do you remember those people that used to like look at these little tiny screens and be like, dee, 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 dee. Um, but uh, anyway, it's like, what are, we, what are we doing with our eyes? Um, okay, so uh, Chayani, let's, uh, let's do a bit of reading here. Uh, here we go. So you are on uh, paragraph E here over the past 40 years whenever you're ready over the past 40 years there have been numerous minor scrimmices in these waters these have been mediated by short-term agreements between canada and the u.s the pacific salmon treaty of 1985 for example but they have never been definitely solved to this day Numerous breaches of sovereign Canadian territory in the region are reported by Canadian fishers. The American fishers, however, believe they are fishing in their national water. The Pacific Salmon Treaty expired on 31st December 2019, and it is unclear what will become of the disputed waters. Okay. Chani, what is this paragraph about? I can tell um, 
the Pacific Salmon Treaty of 1985 is the one of the best mediation between Canada and the U.S. Is it though? Is it good? Like according to this paragraph, was it a good treaty? Uh, I think so. Mm, doesn't sound like it. Uh, repeat this word after me. Skirmishes. Skirmishes. Okay, a skirmish is like a small battle or a small fight. Okay, so um, if I read this, right? So these have been mediated by short-term agreements, for example, but they have never been definitively solved. What does it mean, but they have never been definitively solved? Oh, I think this is like um, never happened in the um, in the occasion, maybe. Yeah, definitively solved means like a clear solution. So there's never been a clear solution, right? Yeah. Um, to yeah, this day, is. numerous breaches of sovereign Canadian territory. Breaches means like breaking of the uh, independent or free Canadian <coughs> land, right? Um, yeah. And the American fishers believe they're fishing in their water. In fact, we even had Spanish fishing boats come over and think that for some reason they should have access to that water. So everybody wants the fish. <laughs> Everyone wants the same spot <laughs> on the river, right? Um, so, uh, and then this last sentence too. So I don't think it's really so much about that treaty. I think it's, I think there's another message here that the, the author is giving us is the main idea. What is the feeling that you get? Now, these questions do become more and more challenging. And, you know, here you definitely need to have a complete understanding. This is why skimming and scanning isn't really good for these list of headings because you need that complete idea of the paragraph. Um, what's the complete feeling of this information or the idea with this? Um, I think this is the fruitless of the um, Pacific Solomon Agreement. I think you're really stuck on that salmon agreement. This is one of the dangers, uh, Chan, and this is for everybody, where you, you pick out one word or like a key word or a name and then you get stuck on it and think that that's what the paragraph is about. Um, read the very last sentence. Um, the Pacific Salmon Treaty expired on 31st December 2019 and it is unclear what will become of the defeated waters. Read just the very last phrase. Um, it is unclear what will become of the disputed waters. So what is this paragraph about? Uh, is this, uh, in the shadow area, it is talk about the fetch. Yeah, now you're getting the right idea. So it's kind of like the uncertainty of this region, right? It's like there's there's just no clarity here, right, of what's going to happen. Like it, it just seems like this problem is going to continue going and going until the Americans bring in a whole bunch of battleships and start shooting rockets or something, right? As they usually do. But I shouldn't laugh. But that's 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 the American solution. All right, guys, we've had enough. Send in the battleships. Um, so um, so this is kind of like the uncertainty of uh, the region or region's future, right? That's what we're really talking about here. Like they've had, you know, some, yeah. But uh, anyway, so take a look at the choices. See if anything matches that, okay? You'll see it in a moment here. Um, it's a bit delay, sir. I know, there's six seconds, so it's okay. At least it gives us a moment to think. It's There's a positive to that delay. It lets you think a little bit. Should I read from the upper? Yeah, you can. Um, okay, I think, oh, I'm confused, sir. Mm -hmm. Well, if I read here right now, I never want to cross out answers, okay, so that's dangerous because there could be a paragraph where there's a better 
match. So be careful with that, everybody crossing out answers that we already gave before, but we can just read from number two here. Fishing and mining, it's not. Um, indigenous rights, uh, the Salmon Treaty of 1985, no. The dispute, not so much. Um, a treaty draws ambiguous lines. We had a very good answer for that one, so it, it could be, but it's, it's not really. Um, an uncertain future for the region's sovereignty. That one definitely jumps out at me, okay? Um, because the word future here, right, and the concept of this really matches with the concept of, and it is unclear what will become of the disputed waters. The disputed waters is the region, what will is the future. And I definitely get the feeling that this paragraph is giving me this idea as the main idea, is that we had this treaty, it kind of worked, kind of didn't, and it's like not sure who is going to control this land or this water uh, in the future, okay? So in this mm -hmm. case, um, Chani, it's the, an the correct answer would be this one, uh, Roman numeral six, VI. Okay, now it's the same um, caution that I advise you as Anahita is be really careful with just narrowing your focus on one word, okay? Um, the reason why IELTS often will not have that as the correct answer is because then people would just skim and scan for keywords like salmon treaty. Oh, salmon treaty, salmon treaty, match, good answer. Um, and it doesn't work like that. Okay, so the IELTS examiners expect people to read the paragraph, read the passage, and get the complete idea to answer these questions. So you're always looking for the complete idea. Okay, Chayani? Okay, sir. Does that make sense? Yeah, I understand what you say. Okay. Um, I have a question, sir. Mm -hmm. Like, um, in my regular practice, I um, face some of the problem, especially in the matching paragraph. There's like the... Two, um, two different answer that um, I confuse what is the um, the uh, the correct answer so instead I leave it again um, so what should I do to avoid this confusion yeah so it's a very good question and it's actually very much related to what we're doing so when you're um, matching the um, given uh, statement to the correct paragraph uh, it's actually a very similar strategies to what we're using for the list of headings, just you do it in a different order. So um, you again have to make sure that you're identifying accurate information that often will come from several parts. So list of headings focuses on the what question. What is this paragraph about? Okay, And the uh, matching information to the paragraph it can be the what, so what the paragraph is about. It can also be the explanation, so why is this information given in the paragraph? And it can be the example, okay, as well. So those ones can actually be a little bit trickier than list of headings, okay? So there, you have to make sure that you have the correct paraphrase and that you're able to clearly identify what part of the paragraph you're looking for, the what, the why or the how. Put another way, is it a topic sentence? Is it an explanation or is it an example? And then you have to make the right match, okay? So, and again, be very careful just trying to match keywords. It doesn't work like that, just like with list of headings. Okay, does that make sense, Chani? Yeah, that makes sense, sir. Okay, we don't have that question type with us today, but in the next reading, that's a very popular one, there's a very good chance that we'll have it, and then we'll go over that again, okay? Okay, sir. All right, okay, Chani, have an awesome rest uh, of your day. Uh, okay, thank you, sir, at the end. Okay. Goodbye. Bye, Chani. All right, um, students, for this very last paragraph, the conclusion, I'll walk you through it. Okay, I believe we have one left, yes. And you can help me with this, okay? So everybody together can do this one. We'll do F together. So here we go. Um, just read with me, okay? Lost in the friction between colonial powers over the centuries has been the voice of the indigenous peoples of the region. The Haida and Tinglet have been fishing the area 
for countless thousands of years. And not only have they had their territory ripped from their hands, but they have also had their ancestral rights to fish their waters diminished as well. Today, the Canadian government aims to mitigate these wrongs by recognizing and formalizing into law Indigenous rights to fish in the area in whatever future agreement comes to be between Canada and the United States. All right, everybody, so what is this paragraph about? Okay, so what is this paragraph about? Give me a nice full sentence answer. And thanks for the thumbs up and the support for uh, Chani, everybody. That's great. It's so important to support each other. All right, this last final conclusion. Uh, what is it concluding? So what is it about? What is the author? What's the closing remark or the closing message of the author here uh, with paragraph F? Uh, Fuang says the future agreement between Canada and the USA. Uh, be a little bit more detailed here, Fuang. What is that future agreement? So what's the main objective of that future agreement, Fuang? So Fuang, um, you're not getting lost in detail, but I think you're missing the point. It's like the point's here and you're kind of swinging around it. Okay, you need to shift a little bit and get to the point. So you're right, it's potential future agreements over the area between Canada and the USA and what is the goal? So what is the main goal of that? That the, okay. Anahita says, indigenous, indigenous peoples deprived of their rights? Yes, Anahita, I, it's, it's in there. It's a part of it. Um, but we need to be, again, Anahita, a little bit more direct. Yeah, Anonymous says, indigenous rights to fish. Okay, and anonymous, if I want to be uh, more specific, then I would say something like restoring, right? Uh, indigenous rights to fish. Okay, do you agree with me that that's basically what the conclusion is here, is restoring, restating, putting back into place, giving back? if you want to simplify it. Again, it's not the vocabulary, it's the concept, right? So giving back the rights to fish for indigenous people, right? Gopu says yes, okay? So I look for that, okay? And by this time, I've read the question so many times that I can quickly go uh, over it, okay? So the treaty of no, fishing and mining, no. Indigenous rights, salmon treaty, no, because that's the past, right? A treaty, the dispute is adjudicated, no. A treaty draws, no, an uncertain and unheard voice. Okay. Uh, no, Haida Gwaii uh, and the uh, Prince Edward Island, overlapping claims, a territory. Okay, so the closest one here is an unheard voice um, for the battle of sovereignty. Why? Because... because it's the unheard voice of the indigenous people to fish the area currently, right? So it's giving that back, giving back the voice of uh, the indigenous people, right? So another way to look at it, and it's a tricky one because it's a bad nine one, but it's a, another way to look at that is um, it's giving back the voice, right? Because currently it's an unheard voice, right? So here I would put in VII and that's the best match for the possible answer. Yeah, Gopu, you're right. It is indirect. But again, for some of these, especially the more challenging ones, you can have a very indirect choice. Okay. All right. Students, that's how you do list of headings. Now for the rest of these, so for these um, uh, matching questions, these ones here. Okay. And for these ones here, uh, do these for homework. Send them to my email, okay? You can't see these in your full course because we haven't published this reading test yet, uh, but it will be on uh, the website uh, later on. So uh, check it out, okay? Um, you can send your answers to those questions to my email. My email is uh, this here, you can send it here, okay? Uh, Chen, just put the email into the chat as well. Thank you, Chen. 
um, and then we'll give you back the answer key, okay? All right, everybody, I'm back in 30 minutes with listening. So we'll do listening parts three and four for the exam that we started yesterday. Uh, make sure to join for that. And um, that's gonna be a subscribers chat class. So subscribe to the channel so you can join the chat, okay? Subscribing is free. Uh, for those of you who are regularly joining and you've been a subscriber for a while and you're like, yeah, this is good, this is good material, I wanna use this, uh, go to aehelp.com, join the premium IELTS course or gieltshelp.com and join the premium, premium IELTS course there if you're a general IELTS student. Uh, students, thank you so much for being with me on this reading. I know it was a bit challenging, but I think you all did a great job. Thank you to the readers, the members. I will be back in half an hour uh, with listening and some listening strategies for those more challenging parts three and parts four. Until then, take a break, uh, have a glass of water, stretch your legs, and I'll see you soon. Okay, bye everybody.